Hi, I'm Seamless. Today is Wednesday, which is the time for a new uh, Track From Scratch live stream. Today is going to be an interesting day. Um, I actually spent the last half an hour uh, not recording, where I was setting up the all the weirdness in, in the song here, for me to actually try to play it with the MIDI bass guitar. Um, I, I have really reasonably high hopes that this is going to work out. Uh, it might... It's, it's probably going to come down to my own personal ability to do this, but I have, I have a setup um, with the bass guitar and also with the foot pedal that looks like this. This is my foot pedal. This is a crude program based. This is the editor that I use to actually change all the values in, in the pedal. And I basically have the pedal set up so that I can switch through the uh, four, well, the five bass patches. It's four and a half bass patches, really. And plus, these all these volume controls up here are on each channel to so that I could switch between the live actual slap bass, which is probably going to be the hardest part of this whole thing in terms of me actually trying to play something, is for, for me to actually play slap bass in between all of this other bass, let alone modulation and all that. But uh, one of the things that I was trying to do when I was making this track initially was um, so that I could control everything on just one thing. That's why the macros were so important, because all these basses, even the, more, even the most complicated ones, that are all muted right now. That was considerably louder than it was a minute ago. Why is this down there? Hope I didn't automate that. Oh dear, I did. I automated those guys. Cool, so that means I have to change some things. What the hell was I doing to automate this thing? Oh, whatever. I'll just put in another fruity balance. <laughs> this is why I don't like automating faders, because if I ever do if I ever do change things, like the faders, this is actually a good a good mixing philosophy, is that you should not really, if, you're, if you want to automate volume or whatever, you shouldn't automate the, ma the macro controls. You should automate th like things like the fruity balances inside them. <laughs> So that you can uh, keep your mixing level. And if you want to make changes level, you don't have to find whatever automation you're doing to make it work. This guy's way too loud. And something else was cutting off. Oh, that was the slap bass. Well, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not really worried about the playback, obviously. This isn't, this isn't actually the same. This isn't the same project. This is another project that I made to try and turn this into a uh, performance project. Though I'm not going to be using it like a performance mode project. It's going to be different. Essentially what's going to happen, if I can get this to work, my plan is basically just to have the track playing in the background and then I'm playing in the bass parts. So it's not so much a performance mode project as it is just me playing stuff. It would be like if you had, if, if I didn't have any of this electronic stuff, I was just using regular bass guitar, then I was just playing bass guitar along with stuff. It just so happens I'm also triggering bass sounds. But like I was saying, uh, even the more complicated bass sounds like these guys are all one macro control. Which means I can have one foot controller controlling all of it. Although there might be some limitations to that. We'll find out in a second. Bass guitar. So last time I was using this bass guitar, I was, doing, I was using this to, to record the um, slap bass. And I was using it just by using the regular quarter wrench I put into my, into my, my interface. But now I'm using this. This is the control, this is the cable that goes into the MIDI uh, breakout box, which I can get in the camera, come on. Ah, uh, yeah, goes in this guy, which outputs a whole bunch of stuff. I'm only, I'm only really even just using the MIDI control of it right now, and I guess also the, uh, the bass guitar signal, the actual magnetic pickup signal. But it can also put out a whole bunch of other stuff. It can put out each individual strings, PAs of pickup as its own audio out. Um, the primary purpose of that is that you're able to map that to things like the peak controller so that you can, you can control volume level on other parameters and that kind of stuff. Um, it also it also outputs the MIDI, it outputs the, the guitar's channel uh, singles, it puts MIDI in and out so you can actually control the bass input as well. And um, a foot switch. But that's not what we need right now. Off the pedal. Off it. Get off. Move. You fool. Did I miss? Whoa. That's on. Oh, 
Oh, I'm muted. <laughs> I'm still not very good at slap guitar, but I was good enough to get the little, sn little snippets. And this is going to require a lot of just practice and drilling on my part, but I expected that. Look at the mess that is my room and my Doritos. I'm much better finger style player anyway. Uh, guitar rig so that I may tune. FL 12K, the 12K version of FL. Never mind 4K, never mind 8K. We're going to 12K. That incredible noise you're hearing is just what it sounds like with the unbelievable amount of compression I'm currently applying onto the bass channel's signal. But that's okay because the signal's only ever gonna be on for incredibly small points of time to fill the gaps that I put it there before. What would I use the peak the peak controller for? The 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 PSO outputs and the idea of the peak controller is for this system that the, the makers of the space refer to as the imprint system. And what that essentially means is that like it's about dynamics because if you have if you like you hit the swing a certain amount like if you want to apply that to a synth, there's calculations that are involved that, that actually makes it, you know, the note on off based on when the thing stops playing, but you can control the volume with the peak controller so that's actually direct. The thing that's actually doing it is is controlling it. It's a bit wonky, it's a bit hard to get it to work, but uh, when it does work, it's 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 extremely, it's extremely cool. There are videos of more competent players using it and that's a lot of fun to watch. Okay, now um, let's try and let's try to actually use some of these bases. Oh wait, first I need to um, tune the guitar itself, the actual MIDI. Open up the manual to find out what fret. The the way that you change MIDI controls, like controls and the, on the bass, is you, uh, you fret a fret, and then you hit the MIDI thingy, and then that's how it knows what you're trying to do. And what I want to do is change the semitones of the whole thing down to D. So two semitones down. What string is that on? There it is. Oh, it's on D. Okay. So that's this guy. D6. Octave. That's, I don't want octave. I want semitone. There we go. Should now the MIDI should be nice. I might have to change uh, the overall octave tuning for this, but we'll find out. Yeah, so let's go to the octave tuning. This is what the octave tuning is for. So that works. That doesn't require any modulation, that particular sound. It just works. Up the FL volume. A little bit. It's a little sensitive, but I gotta get I gotta get really on point with Now this particular sound I think I should be able to get to be able to work with legato.
There's definitely I've done this before. I don't think I have the right MIDI out type. Let me make sure that I don't. Let's be sure that I do. Read my manual. Read the manual. Oh my god. MIDI out. Alright, here we go. Um I'm on a one L. That's what I want. That's MIDI out. That's D4. Oh, no, I don't. I want me to send. It's D2. It's already a mono 1L. No, oh, whatever. I'll figure that out eventually. I did get this to work. The, like the first, the, couple, the first couple times I got this to work, and I, there is actually a bit of a problem. Um, it depends on the synth because right now, uh, Legato works. That's actually weird that that works. But, um, uh, Legato works. Also, pitch bends work too. I just haven't enabled them. But, uh, some of these sounds ha use citrus, and citrus does not have the same kind of Legato mode th that, um, the Harmer ones do. And these are also a different octave than the Harmer ones. I think I have to actually just turn them down. That's like not low enough. So this is why I'm doing this to a, a different project because I have to do stuff like actually just change the octaves for these things. So how low are we supposed to go? Pretty goddamn low. One thing that's nice about playing a, playing a bass guitar like form like the form factor of a bass guitar with electronic stuff is that I don't have to worry about tone when choosing what note to play on what string. So same thing for you guys. No, but you have modulation, so let's... So this is pretty simple. Link to pedal. Voila! All right. Uh, this might be a problem. This was traditionally an issue. Uh, see, it doesn't go all the way down. It doesn't even go close to all the way down. In fact, it gets up top way sooner than I needed to. So this means I have to configure this thing to actually have the right movement. So uh, the middle, it's just above, just below 50%. I'm um, like six, that's what I was trying to do. Wow. Um, I already forget, is it last half? It's kind of the same thing. No, it's first half. I want to move forward, actually. Okay, so it's... This would actually be... Actually, you know what? I don't need to do this at all. Um, this is entirely what the... Um, the macros are for. So instead of controlling that... Oh, this is going to be silly. Um, I'm actually going to put in an envelope controller entirely for this purpose. See, that's the knob up there. I'm going to output... Um, I'm going to activate this. I'm going to link this controller to the pedal. And I'm going to take modulation X mapping so that we can see precisely where it ends. And I can say that that's the full full range right there. Yay. Close enough to full range. And output... Articulated one and attach that to the knob. And that's weirdly still. So that should be zero right there. All right, uh, continuous output, you do that, right? Down to zero. 
There it is. Okay. So that weirdness. That weirdness is what's happening when um, the MIDI range is broken up into 127 steps. And those are the steps that we're seeing right there. And it's only actually doing like 60 of them. So we can sort of fix that by integrating a little bit of smoothing. Let's not do a lot though, because it does kind of fuck up. Although I'm not gonna be able to do all that sharp of stuff anyway with my foot, so how fast it is shouldn't matter so much. That's still pretty bad. Try a bigger smoothing. This just this is this is a problem with the controller itself, which one day I may fix by getting a better controller for the for the foot control. I only really need one. There's two I have right now, but I'm not going to use two of them because I've only gotten the one foot. But yeah, that's fine for this guy. And then the other one. This is the square version. I'm going to have to do the same thing. Put in a flow controller specifically for this purpose. Activate. Delete the controller. Turn this off. I wonder if I did that for the other one. That might actually cause problems. Same spot. All the way up. And... Boink. What? Oh, wait, wrong one. Um, there it is. Or it's lying to me again because it's continuous output. There it is. You're too high pitched. That sounds weirdly wrong. Why is that? Because it was wrong, but if this is wrong, why wasn't the other one wrong? Alright, whatever. <laughs> and there's this guy, which does not require that's really fast oh, that's right because it's the uh The pitch of this has no bearing whatsoever on how fast this is. All right, I just gotta change that is all. Sweet. I mean, this is largely an effect base anyway, so the weirder it sounds, this is fine. I think I have all of, all of the stuff like on, in play now. I'm gonna move the pedal. So let's see.
We got that working. Oh, but okay, I just realized a problem. Um, the so six pedal number six switches between bass, like real bass on and off, but it doesn't switch between which one of these is because, like, in between the sounds, you can see here, like, this guy. This is one of the talky bases, and then it's the real bass, and then it's the Reese. So that means I have to switch between the two, but if I, if I select the Reese, I'm still on bass. It doesn't matter which bass I select. It's still the slap bass. So that, that means that every single one of these pedals, these program change pedals, has to also output CC to turn off, to turn off the main bass. I don't know why I ever wanted, I, don't, I actually don't know why I ever wanted to switch in the first place. Now that I think about it, there was no reason for that. Did I close the editor? I think I did, but it's okay. I have a solution to this. Um, so the way this works, this is gonna work, is that, uh, <sighs> all right. So I need to, number six is on nine. Number six is uh, CC20 at 2027, and so that means that I can make to CC20 at zero. Oh, but is that gonna, yes, because this is already linked. CC20 is what's being linked, not the actual switch itself. So this means that this will undo, six will be on, and then one through five will all be off. Nice, okay, so. 20, 0, 20, 0, does tab work here? It does, okay, good to know. Twenty zero. Twenty zero. using a keyboard like a smart person. Okay, so you're just 20, you're just CC 20 at, at max and you're all CC 20 at zero which will switch. Okay, I hope this works. Um, now I gotta transmit the CC. Changes. Accomplishing things. God damn it, this was harder than I thought it'd be. And like, I already thought it'd be pretty hard. Just so you know. Cool. All right, now we're back in the real world. So switching between any of these, does it change the volume level? So here's one of the volumes of the other guys, and here's the volumes of slap bass. So slap bass, volume off. Other bass, volume on. Yay! It works! It works! Oh, thank God. Okay. Um, God damn it. Chair. This chair hates everything. I mean, I hate most of it too. All right. Cool. One of these days I'll try it. I mean, I actually probably have a way better time pointing to standing up than I am sitting, sitting down. Shitting down. Okay, so first base. Fail. Why fail? For real, why fail? Um, test, test, okay, but you hear my voice. Did I hit something? Did I break the drivers? Oh my God, oh my God, just, <laughs> of all the things. All right, so that's not coming out of anything. Why though? Oh, it's, not, it's actually not going to the master. Why aren't you going to the master? Because the side chain's off. Because the side chain's off. Okay. 
problem solving with Team Lazar. Solving his own problems. That's loud as fuck. That's what that is. Okay, um, I'm gonna F12 all that for a second so I can have a clear on my screen. Let's try this again. Base one. Base two. Tapping is really hard. Uh, base three. Base four. And base five. I'm assuming that's fine. And slap base. So if I if I say like play base one and then go to slap base. Is this quieter than usual? Be correct. This is actually way lower than usual. That's because I turned it down a bit. I can go base one, slap into base three. It works. The system works. Oh my god. Okay. God, I'm so bad at slap base. Oh my god, all right, now let's actually pick a part to try and play. I thought it'd be fun. Except there's a whole bunch of shit that I can't do yet. Like, uh, like at the very beginning of the second drop. Of course, all the notes are wrong now because I changed all the octaves. But the point being is that, like, this part, involves a lot of sliding, and like, I can do that. There is a way to make the bass do that. I just haven't figured that out in a second. So, uh, um, but I, I can read the notes so I know what I'm supposed to do. I can make, I can make appropriate facsimiles of what's supposed to happen. So let's go, let's pick, a uh, let's pick some stuff that I need. I need, uh, I need these guys. Should I want to do? I'm just gonna... Take you to another dimension. Pay close attention. By the other dimension, I just mean way up here. All right, so. Um, although there is a new issue, and that issue is playing the sub. Because all the sounds that I'm playing don't have sub. If I were to play exactly the stuff that's present here, I could just leave the sub in there, but that's not going to work. I think what I have to do is I have to trigger the sub along with what I'm doing. Uh, I could just give sub to stuff. I mean, that's reasonable, I suppose. Uh, most of these, I'm, I'm pretty sure every single one of these are patchers, so I could just put the sub in the patcher. Actually, that could work perfectly. Um, check this out. So if I, uh, <laughs> this is, this will be fun. Um, right now the patchers are in their own thing. Let's go to the bases. Let me, go, let me actually get this, the sub. I'm going to save this as a preset. 
I can do that over here. Uh, funk sub. It's this is actually gonna be kind of weird. So I'm gonna put the come in here, and I'm gonna add a harmer. That's gonna be the funk sub. Watch this. Watch this. Right now, it's going out to the same output as the rest of everything else. And I could just mix it like that. I could actually try and mix it so that the sub is all going in the right place. But I already have a sub channel. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to actually make a specific output go to the sub. I'm going to make a specific output to go to the sub. What the fuck? Hello? You just ignoring me now? For real. Is it because you're not linked to it? I could probably link, I could do the linking. I could just link it to the sub like this. If I turn it off, I think it'll work. Hello? You're supposed to be able to, I, I, like, I did this once. Let's see if I were to just. Oh, it's because it's not linked to the master. The master. Okay, there's ways I can do this. Um, uh, okay, all right. So this is actually fine. Um, I just need to link all these to the master. This is what's up. Actually, let me just test this just before, just in case I fuck everything up. All right, so I can link you to uh, base one and sub. Okay, that's what I had to do apparently. Which one's base one? That's base, that's sub. There, there. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Let's go back to base one and not have the sub linked. There we go. Wow, someone just put a gigantic pentagram in the chat. <laughs> and as he's saying, Satan is watching. To which I say. All right, so that's the link is correct. And the sub is also correct. Well, let's actually get rid of the sub out here. Just in case I screw that up. Wow. Patch was really badass, like, when you get down to it. So, same thing. Master. I need to have, um, no master, sub, and base two, because that's what this one, this one is. It helps when I have everything labeled. Base two, new armor. Uh, you go to sub. Funk subs over here somewhere. Yeah. Because, uh, like, now, like, it, it, I don't, I mean, I, everything has the same sub, but it's the same sub channel, and they're just running into the same sub channel, the same sub uh, insert. So that means that, like, I, I literally changed nothing, but now I can play it both at the same time. I don't have to worry, I don't have to worry about doing extra mixing. Should have thought of this in the first place. This is base 3A, and sub, and no master. Base 3A. Funk sub. Makes me think of a submarine. Or like a sandwich. I'll have a funk sub. Does that thing make you think of a sandwich? Pro tip, when you're in a giant menu like this and you want to engage more than one thing, right-clicking means that it won't close when you click on it. Because normally, this is 3B. If I click on something, it takes that as a selection and it runs with it. I like how I could do like a repetitive thing and like forget what it, like where it was the second ago. I think my brain is just like, well, that was easy. I guess I don't have to care. It's four. I'm trying not to take forever to do this because I do actually want to actually try and do something. Although, yeah, okay. I was just about to think that it is not actually putting out the master. That's good, because I don't actually need to put out the master. There. Now I should have sub. There it is. Although, 
that's probably not the right octave, is it? Not even close. Yeah, so I gotta go. I gotta actually change the octave for all these things. That's easy though, it's just a sine wave. Well, it's a little bit more than, than sine wave, but it's mostly sine waves. Which is actually a true statement for anything you do with armor. It's entirely sine waves. So, nothing I said had any bearing on reality. Never mind. I think I just made one of them an octave higher. I did. No, I didn't. That's right. I divided it. That's not what I wanted to do. There we go. Paying attention to shit I want to do. There it is. Wow, someone is like doing some serious shit in the chat. <laughs> Things I didn't know people could do with text. Gotta be careful about what fret I'm on. Looks like someone's building a railway station in the chat right now. Shit. Nine. Uh, yeah. I forgot about that. Okay. The chat is just like non replaceable now. <laughs> Seamless help. Man, I don't even know. I don't even know how to fix that. I had to solve whatever's happening in there just now. Like, like, look at this shit. What is that? What even is? A penguin? Toucan? <laughs> you guys keep doing that though. I'm. I'm actually trying to do some shit now. Uh. So for this to work. I need to know when all of the things are happening. Um, I'm gonna... I'm actually mo Well, everything about that was wrong. Move yourself. Put you in the right spot, that'd be great. So I can tell when these guys are playing. So I think the top one is the square, the the saw one. Top one is three B. Top is three B. Bottom is three A. This is the Reese, and that's the main bass. And then here's all the various slap bases. Which already on. This ought to be good. All right, so with that in mind, all of this can just be off. Actually, I need, I need some of those automations on. Although that is actually an automation that one day I'll want to figure out how to do by myself. This is a volume automation for the Reese, and this is volume automation for the weird effect base. Which I guess that's what I would want to have put um, on the pedal as a volume animation, but I think I want to get a better expression pedal before I do that. Because my current expression pedal is ass. 
Mm. I need everything to break like that. Meet. I want a little lead in here. This is, this is this is it. This is the moment of truth. Now I need to actually figure out. I should be wearing a strap for this because I don't have to rest it on my leg, and then I can actually use my real leg to be triggering stuff. So I'm gonna get a strap, and then the actual moment of truth will happen. How are we doing on time? Three minutes. I want to get at least a little bit of playing in before I end today's segment, just so that the uh, YouTube people aren't left hanging for a whole day. So what's the best way to do this? Uh, again with why... Oh wait, is it because I don't have the right thing? Oh yeah, so here's, here's the thing about the program change. Is that it matters where you actually are. So let's look at the the notes here. So it's uh, base one and then base two, presumably. Yeah, it slides down, but it's gonna be kind of hard. Just do that, I suppose. And then base one again. And that's also G. Yep, that's base three A, I guess. That, I believe, is a, a G sharp. A sharp, brother. It's G the whole way through. And that looks like it goes down. That's because it does. You lie. I want to know specifically where that is. There we go. Was that an entire octave? I guess just going down kind of works. And then this dude is a high octave down. So <laughs> the sub beneath that is just hilarious. All right. So this is one whole of a progression right here.
So it's... And then this, here's the part where it's, it's trying to get me to... So that's F and E. That's what that is right there, that to hang. What you put doing that's gonna be really hard. That's what, that's what the notes are gonna be. I just gotta, I gotta get the right switching down on the feet. See, that's fucking difficult. So I have to switch it, and I also have to do the modulations with my feet. It's really hard. Damn. This is the kind of stuff that's gonna require a lot of a lot of drilling on my part. So it's like then it's that's three B at the bottom? Three A at the bottom. Automate the switching, someone says. That would probably be the smartest play. I don't think I could switch this fast. I, I know that right now I can't, but I don't even know if I could, even if I tried practicing for a while. <sighs> Although, that, this, that seems a little bit lame for me, to me, to like, uh, just to be playing regular notes and then like whatever comes out is just whatever comes out. The other way that I could do with switching is, um, Although I guess for the slap bass, it has to be this particular way. Uh, Cause the other way to do the switching is to actually zone the guitar in such a way that the particular sounds are in particular places. Like I saw a guy, um, and this is actually pretty easy to set up, where every string can be its own MIDI output. And so it could be like channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four. And uh, that will um, mean that each, the, every single string is actually a different, a different um, instrument. It's just that note wise, that wouldn't, I don't know that would work out very well. And, Play style wise, just uh, I'm not totally sure. Something is still hard though, but this is actually really cool. I actually am super duper into this. Seamless, why don't you control your chat? Because I'm busy. <laughs> Is why I don't do that. I used to have mods. Should probably get more mods. Anyway, that's it for part one. I'll take a short break, and I think the next part I'll actually go to the real project and uh, work on finishing it. I have another idea about what, what kind of cool bass solo stuff I could be doing. I just wanted to see. I just wanted to do a little bit, a little bit of a look into what it would mean to play these things with an actual instrument. I think I might give automating and switching a try at some point. I wonder how I would do that though. I guess I could. I guess I would uh, set up um, um, MIDI notes that would represent changes and then just route, write them, write them in, or just automate it. I guess automating wouldn't be that hard either, because I am mostly just muting things. Uh. <laughs> but it's a brave new world, ain't it? Anyway, uh, I'm, I'm gonna go. If you have any questions about this, let me know. And as usual, have a nice day.